Hello everybody, so today we're going to do a mix analysis of this track by Lorne and I think there is a lot to learn with this track um, on the mixing side and the production side. So I want to try to explain how the mixing really enhanced the build-up of this song because there is just a ton of detail that might not be apparent uh, at a first listen. But I think Lorne is probably the best producer in this genre, or one of the best for sure. And I want to try to explain like how he used the mixing to really enhance the emotion and the build-up of this song. So please, before you watch this video, uh, listen to the whole track, because it will be easier. So the link is right below. And uh, yeah, let's go into it. Okay, so we're going to listen to it and I will just comment on what I think is interesting. So let's go. Okay, so you notice that at the beginning, he doesn't give you everything right away. He starts with a very filtered sound. So sort of, uh, the harp is sort of really bent past, you know? Like you're missing a lot of bass and you're missing a lot of treble. And that's good because it prevents you from getting everything at once. You know, it just gives your ear part of the range that it can hear. And it allows you to build expectation. So right here he introduces a sub bass, uh, but it's a clean sub bass. And that's quite important because later on he will do more distorted things. Um, so yeah, at this point he's just giving you something more. He, he's not just giving you the mid range. He's starting to introduce the very low sub, but in a clean way, which makes it sort of discreet and not gritty. So yeah, let's continue. also notice that this sub is mono. Uh, it's completely mono and that really creates contrast between the wide synth and everything. Um, because yeah, it's almost sort of a different space to have something mono. Uh, well, it, it, something mono has actually no space. So yeah, it makes it really contrasted with the ops. No, just some mid-range pads, but nothing too crazy. <clears throat> okay, right here, he's opening up the spectrum. So he's using the, the filter to really open up these ops. So now he's giving you a bit more treble, um, just a little bit more treble. So he's opening up the, the treble area. So that makes the track grow, um, basically, in terms of frequency spectrum uh, towards the bass and the treble. So it started with just the black here. And then you get these extra frequencies, so it keeps interest and keeps your ears exciting and uh, expecting more, because your ears, like subconsciously, even if you don't kind of internalize this, they realize that you get more and more information in the spectrum. So they keep wanting more and that keeps kind of the tension and the hypnotic feel going. And in my opinion, that's what makes it not boring. So it is really powerful. Uh, he suddenly makes the bass more distorted. 
And instantly that makes it more tonal and you hear that bass line a lot more than before. But it's still the same pattern that you heard since the beginning. So it's still familiar, but it's a lot more powerful and, and growling and tonal now. And it's still very much mono. But now that there is more higher low mids compared to just the sub, you actually hear better that it's mono. Okay, now he keeps building the excitement with that new uh, kind of plucky bass going on. And you can hear that this plucky bass has some very sharp attacks. So that really helps it cut through the arps and all the treble that's already there. But you can also notice that this plucky bass is not a very bassy. It's just more lead at this point. But you will see how he turns this lead into something else later on. But for now, let's continue. <laughs> So the main bass is still the bass that we heard from the beginning, but now it's distorted and growling. You can hear now uh, he introduced a lower octave, I think, uh, on this uh, plucky bass. Uh, so he's, he's kind of turning this lead into a bass, you will see. And the main sustained bass that we had before is now becoming secondary. And he's using this, this plug bass to really kind of build intensity because it's a more powerful, kind of more percussive sound compared to the sustained bass. So he's kind of replacing the sustained bass with this now. You can still hear a hint of the of the the older sustained bass here, but it's becoming more and more massive. The the plucky one. Okay, now it's it's like really strong. Now he opened the filter for sure. Okay, something really interesting is happening here. So you thought you heard everything because you're like almost three minutes into the track. You thought you got the full spectrum already, right? No, uh, sure, you get the bass, but he kept that, that higher treble for the very end just to build more. Um, now you have this lead, you will see in a second. This lead which has just a tiny bit more treble. So he gives you even more and you didn't expect that because you're already so far in the track, right? But check this out. And he keeps it going with these little glitchy sounds, which are also very sharp in the 10 to 20k. So that really, you know, keeps the very high treble thing going. And at the same time, you notice how now the main bass pattern is definitely this, this plug, and how this plug gets more and more massive. There is more and more sub and more and more um, lower octaves. Or he's just probably just raising the lower octave. This is really interesting because you started with a really bent bass track and now, now we got the track that's basically building up like this. So if you have 20 to 20k, this is what he's doing. Oops. You know, and it keeps building like that. gets more creepy here. Okay, so in my opinion, this is the climax of the piece. So of course, this could differ for 
some people. But I don't know if you noticed, but at the beginning, the bass was mono and then it became stereo. So the main plug bass here is stereo. Dun, dun. Like it, it's, you know, it's not, it's wide, it's not mono. But then when you least expect it, because everything was stereo here, he gives you that bass again, but extremely loud and distorted and mono. So it really surprises you because your ear is not expecting this pattern to be mono because it never was. Um, but again, you know, he surprises you and makes it mono here. And my, in my opinion, that makes this moment extremely powerful and the most powerful moment of the track for me. And yeah, this is pretty much the most bass uh, ratio to mid-range and, and treble that you ever had in the track. So this is the only spot where he really hammers you with almost just bass to kind of finish you off. <laughs> And this is cool. Right here, when you don't really expect it, you know, it's the end of the track. He could, he could not do that, but he still does it. So again, lots of attention to detail, a little panning automation on just these two notes here. And then there is groups of two notes again, which have it. So left, right. And you also notice that the reverb is not recentering things. Uh, so this automation, is um i think he's sending it into some dual mono reverbs because otherwise if it was just stereo reverbs and he sent the pan sound into them uh, the sound wouldn't come as hard panned but here it feels very hard panned so it's probably a reverb, a reverb that um, you know sticks to the left and the right channel instead of just a centered stereo reverb because you get the tails but they stick to their side So yeah, I mean, pretty much this track, in my opinion, is very interesting the way it builds up because it's pretty much the same pattern all the way through. But, you know, he uses all these little tricks, uh, sound design and mixing tricks to really keep the, you know, the, the interest going. So I hope you guys found this video interesting and maybe you will think about some of this stuff if you try to, you know, even in orchestral or hybrid productions, uh, maybe you will find some ideas. You know, I think it's really interesting to look at these great producers and try to see what they did. So yeah, guys, I hope you found this interesting and I will see you later. Cheers.